Hi guys, Jeremy Lindquist here, one of the instructors with the, the press room. Um, during this time, we're all at home, so I thought I want to give you guys some um, content, maybe a class to lead through with um, exercise you guys can do around the house. Uh, this is built on the SeaWorks class frame set, in which we're going to be recruiting um, really general type of body weight strength movements. We may be using some implements around the house, but I really want to design this to make sure that it's something that you can follow along with, um, that you could use simple things around the house, not requiring any special equipment, such like dumbbells or anything. Uh, kind of can make stuff that basically compares to the same deal uh, as far as how you get a good workout for yourself. What I'm going to do is I'm going to guide through a series. We're going to go through mobility. We're going to go through a general strength phase where there's going to be four main movements, um, hitting all sorts of parts of the body, so we're going to get a full body workout out of it. And then I'm actually going to finish out with a cardio blaster on you guys, a conditioning aspect. All right, we're going to hit up a little Tabata at the end. In the all, it could be about 45 minutes, could go longer, all depends on your level. With this, I want you to make sure that you pay attention to the different regressions and progressions I give you for each movement. Decide what suits you best, what's the best, um, what's the most appropriate for your ability type, and advocate for yourself. Be safe, have fun, push yourself, okay? I'm not going to be there to push you, but I want you to try to challenge yourself to some of the more difficult movements I pose out here. Um, but honestly, just try to get the best workout you can, but be safe, okay? All right, guys, so again, we're going to start off with those mobility movements. So I'm going to back up. You may see Loki interrupt a little bit. He's my puppy, but he's roaming around right now. So if he comes in, it's going to be awesome. It's going to be funny. All right, but we're going to get after it together here. So let's start with our mobility. We're gonna work on the hips first. So you guys are gonna stand. I'll try to get in frame here for you. All right, so you can see me. Choose a place to stand. If you need to have a wall nearby or even pull out a kitchen chair and hold the back end of the chair, okay. What you're gonna do is you're gonna raise your right knee up to a hip level. There's Loki, all right. Circle that knee out. And we're gonna do some big thigh circles. So I'm trying to maintain good posture. I'm working on balance. If you don't need the wall, challenge yourself like that, okay. And working on maybe six to eight full circles, okay? Now we're gonna circle it in, that same leg. Still trying to maintain your posture, keeping the hips still. If you need to use that wall or the chair, go ahead, keep your hand close by, okay? Six to eight, and then you're gonna switch. So go other leg, circle out. Your pet gets in the way, you just keep going, all right? Don't hurt anybody, but don't stop yourself. This is your time. We're gonna get a good workout in. He's gonna lick my face a few times, it's fun. All right, circle it in, same leg. See, I'm already starting to get a little shaky, get the breathing, that's good. All right, we wanna change our body. We wanna get that readiness state going. Really get a good workout in today. Doesn't need to be complicated, okay? Next one we're gonna do is a leg swing. So make sure you have some room front behind you. You may have to turn yourself a little bit. What I'm trying to do is keep a leg straight and swing it as high in the front and behind me as I can, trying to maintain that posture. A good full six to eight full swing throughs. Just loosen up some of the hips here, the bigger muscles. Switching legs already. You can shadow with your free hand. You can challenge yourself without holding onto something. I'm gonna try not to kick Loki again. It's gonna be a common thing. Very good guys. Now we're gonna go side to side a little bit, okay? Cross the leg over, drift it out. Keep that working. Nice and steady. Again, if you need to hold on, this one's actually kind of difficult. Whoop, you got in the way. Okay, there we go. Hey, buddy, I know you want to play right now. I'll play with you, but we got to get on the floor. All right, I already switched legs, guys. Keep working on raising that leg up. Try to avoid leaning away. Maintain that standing posture, that position. Very good. It's my first time ever doing a workout from the house at least through a camera, so please bear with me if I'm a little bit of uh, hesitation with the, the vocals and the, and the cues, okay? All right, the next one we're gonna do is called a runner's lunge, one of my favorites. Take a mat, if you have a yoga mat, lay it right here, okay? You can go long ways with it. Let's go down with one knee on the ground, and then bring this other leg out in front. Take both hands. Now I'm gonna post both hands inside the heel, okay? So don't split the leg, but stay inside the heel, and then kick this back leg straight out, so you feel a good stretch in the hamstring and the hips. And then I just want to wobble my body around, forward, back, side to side. Thank you, Loki. 
He's going to give me some attention. So I play fetch with him. He goes and gets his toy, comes back. It's a fun way to interact. All right, I want you guys to switch sides. Push the other foot up. Remember, both hands inside that heel. Try to keep your chest down. All right, stay squared up. Keep moving around, a little wobble. Hi, buddy. Yeah, Loki. Yeah, everybody's watching you. Here we go. Go get it. All right. All right, hopefully you can imagine what that's like well enough. That should loosen up the hips quite a bit, okay? Next part we wanna do is work on some shoulder circles. So not only do we want you to raise your hands out to the side, but I want you to kind of squeeze your shoulder blades back a little bit, feel the back side of your shoulders engage, and then make a little fist, all right? So act like you're gonna be pulling a rope into you, you're holding an anchor, all right? Let's start with small circles going forward, keeping that pressure between your shoulder blades. All right, I wanna warm up the shoulder muscles. All right, get your back a little active. You might feel a little tension back there. Start to open up into a bigger circle, not very big, but just a little bigger. Do about six to eight circles. Go ahead and open up even more. Ho, 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 I almost got in trouble there. All right, this is all interesting, guys. We're gonna make it work. Very good. All right, let's go back to center. Remember, squeeze those shoulder blades. Go backwards, okay? Small circles. All right, don't need to be fast. Go ahead and open it up a little bit bigger. Nice, guys. Now, I'm not doing music back here because a lot of times you can't post videos on Facebook. You can't share this stuff when there's copyright stuff going on in the background. So if you got your own playlist at home, hook up that Spotify and then you can resume the video, okay? Get your own playlist going. You might even want to use that a little bit later on uh, when we do conditioning. We get the little Tabata going. Our next one is going to be called the Downward Dog. It's a little bit of thing borrowed up from yoga. I'm going to do it right over my dog. All right. We're going to post the hands right up near the head of the mat. I'm going to start to peek my butt up high in the air and try to keep your legs straight. Good. Hopefully you can hear me. S try to push your chest towards your knees and then sink your heels towards the ground. Thank you, Loki. I appreciate the participation. Good. Alternate your heels. You can go ahead and pedal them out towards the ground. Get a little more stretch in your calves and your hamstrings. <laughs> oh, he's such a character. I love it. About 30 or 40 seconds in this position is really good, guys. And then you can post out into a plank. Okay, what we're going to do is something called a pigeon pose. What that means is I want you to take your right knee and bring it up to your palm, okay? So it's really hard to see me in the view right now. I'm sorry. All right, I got my right knee right behind my right palm. Take your ankle and the right leg and try to cross it in front of you, across your body, okay? Like if you had a yoga mat, it's gonna be perpendicular to the length of your yoga mat. You may not go very far, you might get it all the way perpendicular. Once you get that position, make sure your back leg is straight, and then you're gonna creep down towards the ground on your forearms, right, to Loki's level. Yes. And we're gonna hold this stretch for about 20 seconds. And you're going to feel that on the outside of your hip. It's going to be good. We need to keep loosening up our hips. Especially if we're not moving around as much as we used to without being able to leave the house much. Very good. Go ahead and let that leg out slowly. All right, if you want to go back into a down dog position for a little bit, you can stretch that hamstring out. But then we're going to go left knee up. Cross that left heel over. All right, and then let's start to settle down from that leg. So now we're on that left hip. Thank you, Loki. You got your moose? You got your moose? You wanna go get it? Go get your moose. There we go. Temporary. All right, after about 20 seconds, you can let that leg out slowly. Okay, our last one is a favorite in the class. It's gonna loosen up your lower back really well. Basically what I want you to do is lay on your back and you can either bring your knees over your hips, kind of see how my heels are down low towards the ground, or you could always extend the legs straight up, but we're trying to keep those over the hips and then I want to let them roll over the side while I keep my shoulders flat. It's really hard to talk when Loki's on my face. Sorry guys. I'm just going to rock side to side. <laughs> 
You should feel a big stretch on your lower back. <laughs> oh, buddy. You're killing me, Smalls. Oh. Almost there. A couple more each way. Go get your moose. There we go. <laughs> I told you he might join us. All right, guys. Nice work. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and go ahead and talk about our main strength movements today. Okay. You, if you're not feeling warmed up completely yet, you can also do a little bit of walk around the house um, or just kind of get going. The strength will continue to do the job, okay? What I'm going to do is give you the four main movements today, okay? I'll talk about what the, the main focus is, and then I'm going to give everything from a really low-level intro um, regression to the movement and then go through different levels of intensity or challenge for you and talk about what to think about. So this might be a little bit lengthy in this, all right, but I'll try to make through it as efficiently as I can. The first one we're gonna do is called the single leg RDL, all right? What this is gonna be, it's gonna be a balance on one leg. We're gonna to try to keep the leg pretty straight. We're gonna hinge at the hip, and we're gonna to try to bring a hand and reach down along your shin, or try to touch your, your shoe or your toes, okay? You may not be able to touch, the, the, touch your toes or touch the ground, but try to touch somewhere below your knee, all right? And your hamstrings will dictate how far you can reach down. So what that's gonna look like, all right? The most regressed movement, you can use the back of a chair for balance. You may find you really need that, okay? What I want you to do is balance on that right leg and you have the right hand near the backing of the chair, all right? So just here in case you lose your balance, try not to rely on it too much unless you need to. What we're gonna do is have this left heel off the ground. I'm gonna keep my hips up tall here, got that leg straight on the right side. Take your left hand, all right, and we're gonna keep that right out in front of my thigh. I want you to tilt forward just at the hip, not at the knee, all right? Don't let the knee squat. Hip tilt at the hip. Reach down as low as you can, all right? Again, anywhere below the knee, but as far as to the ground. Notice how my body is trying to stay in a pretty straight line here. All right, if I don't need the chair, I'll stabilize and work on balance from a different viewpoint. Okay, this side, I got my right leg balanced. Tilt at the hip, tilt at the hip, and try to touch somewhere along your shin. I want you guys to do eight on each leg on that, okay? So that's just with the body weight, the most regressed form, all right? If you wanna make it harder, what I would do is grab a jug of something from your garage, all right? A fluid filled gallon like this, it's about nine, eight and a half pounds, nine pounds. All right, so it could be just enough to make this challenging for you. Then what we're gonna do is you're gonna take that jug in the opposite hand and do that same movement and try to touch the jug to the ground, okay? Now I'm trying to keep my back straight, I'm trying to maintain my balance and stabilize all three of those joints on that leg, okay? If you need to make that harder, you can do two jugs, okay? One in each hand. Now I gotta square up my shoulders and work through this. I'm gonna try to bring those jugs down at the same time, standing up at the same time. You may feel like you lose your balance a little bit. Post on the ground if you need to. Reset yourself. And lastly, if you want even more weight, fill up a backpack with books, with water bottles, uh, with canned goods. Make some weight in here. I got books in here, it weighs about 30 pounds, I would say. All right, so what I can do is I can hold it up by my chest, center of both hands, and I can uh, not reach, but I can actually just work on tilting my hips and then bringing that weight up. I can always go out with it, make it a little harder. All right, I can always wear it on one shoulder and challenge my balance a little bit more. Keep that elbow squared back, okay? So you got a lot of different ways to make it harder just using simple things around the house. Our next movement is called a goblet squat, okay? So now we're moving on to a different movement, doing something called a goblet squat. If you're not used to doing squats and you don't feel comfortable with sitting back without losing your balance, use a kitchen chair, okay? And you're gonna hold one of those jugs right in your hands, all right? Now this is if you feel good. If you don't feel good with that, keep yourself open. What I want you to do is have your hands out in front of you. I wanna sit my hips back first, drive my knees apart, all right, so see how my knees are spreading a little bit as I stick my butt back, and I'm gonna try to touch that chair. Sit briefly, and then stand up without your hands. Okay, so we're gonna go into that phase. Drive up, drive down. Use your hands as that counterweight. If you wanna use some weight, you can pull this jug in the center. Okay, 
keep that up in front of you or keep it in close if you need to keep it easier, okay? Make sure your knees keep going out and your posture keeps upright. If you need to make this harder, you can take two. Let's turn them upside down, okay? Kind of like using kettlebells, okay? Rest them right, right by your shoulder and you are gonna sit and back to that chair. You don't need the chair either, okay? If you want to go deeper, you can go deeper without the chair. Challenge yourself. Now you can always go intensity, more speed. You can always add more weight. Or again, use that backpack and we'll do a press out. So squat, press it away, hit, change views, press it away, bring it back in. All right, a couple different ways to make that squat harder. So I want you guys to do 15 reps of that. So do the RDLs first, eight each side and then do the squats for 15, okay? The next is gonna be called a delt melt, okay? So the delt melt is gonna be working a lot on the shoulders. So these outside muscles of the shoulders are gonna really hit those delts.